agenda item number three, and this is a uh, we're holding a public hearing meeting, and uh, this is to uh, discuss uh, the future of Big Well. Okay, good evening. Our uh, projected revenues for 2015 and 16 for the general fund, and we went over these numbers at our budget workshop meetings on June the 15th and the 16th. Our estimated revenue for local is 64 million 349,170. State at 1.8 million. Federal at about 162,000 for a total revenue of 66 million 379,616. With our property values changing from 7 billion to 6 billion, we have a responsibility to pay our Chapter 41 recapture payments, and those are estimated for next year at 45.7 million. Once we net that out against the revenue of 66 million. That leaves us with a projected deficit of 3.7 million into the 15-16 school year. And this deficit will continue every year and possibly, I mean, this number may change obviously, but the important thing is that we don't know what our values will be next year. And as of right now, the six billion has been an estimated, a certified <coughs> estimate, estimated property value that we received from the appraisal district as required by law by the end of April. But the actual certified value will be certified on July 25th, but we do not anticipate that that number will be higher. It will either be six billion or possibly less. So these are based on the property values going from seven billion to six billion. Having said that, during our budget workshop, the board heard um, the variety of needs of the campuses and the different departments, and we have put together a list of items for the board to consider, probably about 15 or so items. With that, we've already done a lot of reductions with current vacancies. We've done reductions to our departmental budgets by about 10%. We've, um, we've looked several times at our stipends in various categories. And uh, we've been able to bring this shortfall down probably about $2 million. And so we're working diligently to get this number down. In the future years, in order for us to not be a Chapter 41 district, our values would need to be at about $1 billion. So if we're at $6 billion, we have a ways to go. And we don't know if this will turn. I mean, I don't know that it'll go from $6 billion to $1 billion in one year. But none of us know what that number is. Yes. Just for clarification, because our property values were six billion. Seven billion. Four. Right now they're estimated at six billion, which was certified by the appraisal district on the school board. So the school district has to send them back. We still have to send back to the state the forty-five million based on the percentage rate at last year's value. The state is always behind one year in the way they calculate our state funding. To add to that, we're not getting for our aid, state aid very minimal. Our state aid is now about 800000 whereas in the past, when our values were about $400 million, before the oil boom, our average property values for Dimmick County were about $400 million. So everything above $400 million has been as a result of the oil. Okay. Um, yeah. One of the things that we considered uh, <clears throat> this uh, shortfall was the fact that uh, what, we, what we could actually go up uh, from 106 to 117 in tax and what would that do to this deficit well that'll give us about a million okay. six billion in, in, in taxes and wish mm -hmm. only we would be able to carry only one about 1.2 million. 1.2 right. and the rest goes to the state. Right. And the way I look at it is okay, so why are we texting our community in order to you know. in order to send uh, um, five million to to the uh, state for someone else to right. use that money? The so way the way uh, that is calculated 
anything up to $1, 1.0 tax rate, it's subject to recapture at about 68%. From 1.01 1 .01 to 106, they call those the golden pennies. Those are not subject to recapture. So that's why we have been taxing at $1.06, because we can keep those six pennies. From 107 to 117, we would be at a recapture rate of 82 or 83%. So that means the additional revenue of raising six million, like he said, Mr. Casaneda said, we would be sending to the state five million of it, and we would be able to reduce this deficit by about 1.2, but at a cost to the community of uh, increased taxes. So and what what we've done is is uh, look for the possibility to reduce the the uh, deficit, and that's what we've been working on. And uh, it, what would happen if we just left the deficit as it is. Okay, our uh, fund balance is over $20 million, but we're required to keep three months reserve in fund balance. So that means that by law and by board policy, we should keep that reserve for uh, operating expenses. So when I net that out, we would have about $19 million. So if we did nothing about the deficit and just continued operating as normal, we took no action on any of the items that we brought forward, then at about 3.7 million, if we run it, round it up to 4 million, well, in year one, which is next year, we would take 4 million out of our savings, then we would have 15 million left. Year two, we don't know what the values are, but if the values continue to go down, who knows if our shortfall will be the same or more, or it could be less. But if we were to average about 3 million or 2 million, then we eat away at our fund balance. One day, we will be out of fund balance. Or the state would come in and say, We've been watching your finances, and we're going to, you know, bring you what you need to do. We, we don't take care of our finances ourselves. Um, I can go over the projections. Yes, sir. Okay. I have a four-year history for Big Rock Elementary, <coughs> starting with the year 2010-11 through 2013, and then the estimated for 2014-15, the year we're in, obviously we're not done until August, so that's why those are estimated, estimated numbers, and then they're projected for next year. On average, between 2010-11 through 2013-14, our en enrollment has been 52, 48, 47, and 49 students. So roughly about 50 students over those four years. Currently, right now, our 2014-15 school year, we have our enrollment at 27. Uh, the projected enrollment for 2015-16, you know, as per conversations with our principal and doing our projections, um, that has been brought forward to us to administration and it's been estimated at 12 students for next year, the 15-16 school year. Our expenses for the past four years between, these are actual expenses that are audited numbers, between 2010-11 and 2013-14 has averaged about 400,000, 410,000, 405, 426, and uh, the 13-14 school year, 465,000. Currently right now, for the 14-15 school year, we are at about 335,000 as of May. It does not include June, July, and August. Obviously, you know, I'm trying to give you actuals there. And then projected for 1560 with the drop of enrollment is about 409,000 for next year's budget. So our cost per student has been uh, increasing. In 2010-11, it went from 7,887 to 8,446. In 2012-13 to 9,069. And in the 13-14 school year to 9,500. And then, of course, you know, this year is, is estimated to an outstanding year. The new year will be like, you know, projected on <coughs> Thank you. Board Thank you. Well, I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay. This is just a question. If, uh, <coughs> we would have passed the bond, which is this mm -hmm. hey, What would have been the difference in the monies? Okay, um, the bond money does not cover operations. The bond money only can cover items for debt. That the the debt money that we raise through a bond is subject to zero recapture. 
That means that every dollar that you tax on the INS side for a bond payment stays in Carrizo Springs for your building projects and you do not send any of that back to, to TEA. So it does not impact this piece because this is operations, but if we needed to improve our facilities, that would be subject to zero recapture. Any the allowable items are uh, construction obviously, technology, buses, vehicles, anything that is out of the ordinary of your regular day-to-day -day operations for <coughs> your district that would qualify. Uh, that well, is that twelve plus what they have or just twelve total? No, my understanding is that is twelve total. Uh, we had a cabinet meeting, we discussed it with our principal and our directors and we had input from our from our principal and that is their projected enrollment. It was actually fourteen, but two two kids pulled two kids pulled out that they were gonna enroll at CSC next year. So that number went from fourteen to twelve here recently. So we've been trying to tag on it. Well, we had had reports since so you were showing and you were sharing them with them uh, back uh, as far as uh, with you. As far as the 10 uh, We've had reports. Uh, what was the report? I don't know what the report is. But the reports were the beginning that we needed to, to uh, close. Uh, oh, yes. As far as uh, based on the, the task of study, facility study back in 2006, and their recommendation as far as the types of accounts that should be based on the district. Information based on the facility. Do I have any questions or comments from the board? I'm over here in the corner by myself. That's okay. You can still come back to me. This is uh, critical. Uh, this is hard. I realize it, but uh, this is something that this district is going to have to do now. Uh, one of the things that I have asked uh, the superintendent and uh, Ms. Rocha is that we provide uh, good uh, buses that are not going to be having any problems. Uh, as a matter of fact, we ordered two new buses. Uh, I'd like to see very much that we put a new bus on that on that route. Uh, and we even discussed the possibilities of of having uh, rather than uh, starting that particular classroom uh, in the early uh, at 8 a.m. Possibly start it at 9. Uh, where because, uh, because we have uh, smaller children, uh, those are avenues that we have visited that we are still looking at. But uh, the, 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 the true fact is that we, we cannot continue to operate a campus under those numbers. There's just no way. And, and uh, as much as I understand some. Uh, uh, community leaders in, in uh, Big Wells uh, might not agree, but uh, we, we have to be uh, do the best we can with, uh, with uh, what we have right now and, and, uh, and what it really does say is that we need to close that campus and, not to be, and we have to work on that deficit. Uh, if we don't work on that deficit, we are not, and that's not, that's, that's not just uh, <coughs> big uh, We've asked every campus to share with us on that deficit, to go back and look at the, at the uh, budget. It's best that we work with it now, that we, that we together, we can uh, suffer uh, some of the <coughs> causes of the deficit. Because we weren't, we're not going to be able to have everything that we want. But if we work with it now, we're not next year. If it does stay the same, we won't be in such a bad position. If it goes up, we'll be in a better position. But if it comes down, we might be looking at another deficit. And we don't know. 
uh, we we were not anticipating actually a much lower drop in, in, back, in, in, February. Uh, in back in February. So uh, this is important for this board to to take action. And like I said, we also looked at the avenue of increasing that 106 to 117, but I don't think that that's that's not the the best resource to do it, and I believe that if we could at least keep half of that money, we would be in better shape. But not even that, not even half. So what, why should we be taxing our community and then sending it out? It I want to add another com comment. Uh, back in February, when Larry said we came down from Region 20 and gave us, this, you know, he looked at our numbers to make sure that, you know, our calculations are correct. He gave us an update on our summary of finance. But basically, the way the funding formula is, is, and this is happening to all of the school districts around the state, except we were fortunate for those few years when your property values are going up, you have a gain, you have a gain, you have a gain. So we had some really good gains, but now that we're on the downfall side, it's basically putting us back to our revenue of where we were in 2010-11. So if you think of that in your own personal budget, if, you know, you may have received raises or so forth or moving forward in your career, uh, it would be like saying, hey, we're going to put you back in your, where you were in 2010-11, you're going to live at that budget. Basically, that is what the funding formulas will do. So as the years move forward, um, eventually we should be able to see a shift with the state money, but we will basically be back at our operating budget from 2010 That's what, That's what we are. That's Larry Stavon over here with us. That should be our goal. And basically, this is the budget that we're facing right now, the one we're working on right yes. now. It's going to be a budget on 2011. In other words, instead of going forward, we're going to backwards. And, and, and that's the problem that we have when we have Chapter 41. Uh, being a Chapter 41, and everybody, everybody feels like all this oil, all this money that's coming into Dibbitt County, well, to the district, it's like we're a rich, <coughs> poor district. To the county, the county keeps its money. To the city, we're just they, they keep the money. We are just we're just looking at the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars just floating yeah, to yeah. the other side. We're not keeping it, and that's where the I think the, the perspective of, of of all this money is. That, is it good for the community? Yes, it's been good to the community. But, but not to the school. The school, we're in a different boat here. And can we say, well, why are they doing this to us? Well, and I've asked that question myself. Why why are we doing this? And why is this happening to us? But if we stop and think of all the years that the state actually funded us, they actually funded us. We had no money. That money had to be coming from somewhere. So now it's our turn to sit back. It's just pay back. <laughs> our monthly Chapter 41 payment right now is $6.3 million per month. And it started in February and it ends in August. So for seven months, we have to pay $6.3 million back. Is there any other comments from the yes. board? I, like to make a <laughs> um, I hate to see this happen because, uh, first of all, I've I talked there in Big Ross. That's where I started. And I had good, good memories, and I really, really wanted to keep, keep the teachers of Mr. Phillips. I think that's kind of arm. had good memories. Uh, I know that the uh, school is the center of, of our town. I know that. Uh, they're prouder, the kids are prouder. But we also have a financial responsibility to those kids that are over there, and those kids that come to school. And actually, the Green Springs uh, uh, School District. And we need to do the best we can to provide that education to these kids with the money we've got. And Catania uh, just said, why are we doing this place so long? It's a rocket We've been around for a long, long time. And 
there were much less schools than there is now because of the oil. And you go down 10 miles away, they're probably getting some of our money that we were uh, sending to uh, uh, the state. With all the, with the city, all these other schools that are not chapter 41. They now accept them. So, I mean, I hate to see this happen. And I've looked and I've, been, I've had sleepless nights just thinking about it, saying, what can we do from having a small one room to keep them there? You know, it, it just it's, it's really has been iron on. I'd like to make a comment, and I made this uh, in the past. Um, the, the community is, is the sense of pride is in their is in their school, is in their community school. Um, due to budget reasons, of course, and, and our shortfall, uh, it's, it's it's tough to do. I made the comment also that with the oil field traffic, the larger trucks, and the possibilities of having those accidents that are going to happen somewhere. Uh, fortunately, we haven't had that with any one of our school buses. <clears throat> now we're carrying, now we're, we're, and I hope we do this if this is what's going to happen, put a, put a one bus uh, for kinder and first grade alone. Uh, we talk about bullying and it's not, hasn't gone away. Uh, I don't want that to be, you know, the stigma of, you know, now we now we're busing these kids out there now they're at risk of, of being bullied as well. Um, already, you know, the schools on the chopping block already uh, going that route now to hurt their children even more by being one of those children that are being bullied. Uh, again, the traffic is, is horrendous. We see accidents all the time. Again, fortunately, it hasn't happened to any one of our buses. But it, the possibilities of it happening are much greater. So, uh, those are my two cents. Well, may I ask you? Yes. Hey. This is Brana. Uh, I would like you to study what I. Well, I would like to have a study to do district one. Let's say, and I'm not telling you to do it, it has to be a board to come with an instrument where we can have a comprehensive needs assessment on the finances of the school district. And that way we can identify all the needs in all the departments. Instead of just about a year, a year, a year with no foundation to support why we're doing it. UIL, sports, but if we do a study, if we can come up with an instrument, then this board will have a consensus in uh, having maybe someone to assist us in uh, maybe 2020, or And that way it will give us a good picture of how we can make that super in every part of I guess you kind of want to know what the real costs are. What is the real number? In the public hearing, uh, we, have the, we have the numbers there. Right. right. We're talking about the budget? Yes. We have the numbers, and I think we present that's the coming, That's coming hopefully at the next meeting, but We're going to meet in, in July the 3rd or 7th. 7th. And, and just so you're aware, we do have a needs assessment
one of the things that uh, I discussed with this companion was the possibility of I don't know if you have it in the medicine. The fact that we didn't have any body in that bus coming from big wealth and going back to big wealth. Is there any other uh, comments from the board? Do I have any comments from the public?